A warm welcome to your Barbados Today evening news update for Thursday, February 24. The world is paying keen attention to the unfolding military invasion in Ukraine, and so too is Barbados. Minister of the Ministry of Foreign Trade Sandra Husbands told Barbados Today one Barbadian national is in Ukraine and has reached out for assistance to leave the Eastern European country, but she assured that the Barbadian is safe. As news broke that Russian forces launched a full-scale assault on Ukraine and its military attacking the country from the north, east and south, Prime Minister Mia Motley joined scores of world leaders calling for an end to the attack. In a statement expressing grave concern, she denounced the use of force and called for all parties to use diplomacy to reach a peaceful solution. Motley made it clear that the actions of the Russian Federation are a violation of the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine and one of the rules of the non-interference in the eternal affairs of another state. She underscored the importance of the United Nations Charter, which calls on member states to agree to refrain from the threat or use of force against another state. Prime Minister Motley called on the Russian Federation to immediately cease its hostilities and respect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine. In other news this Thursday, residents in some St. Michael, St. James and St. Thomas districts are grappling with water woes. The Barbados Water Authority says it's because of declining water levels at its reservoirs. Director of Engineering Charles Leslie said the BWA is working on the situation but customers won't get much reprieve until reservoir levels improve. The Barbados Water Authority continues to experience low reservoir levels at three facilities. Some work was done at the source that supplies those um, reservoirs um, up to late last night. The crews were out doing the work. As a result of the low reservoir levels, customers in the St. James, St. Michael and the St. Thomas areas will still experience low water levels and outages. And the system will continue to experience those problems until the supply to those reservoirs is is, is restored and, and the levels improve. The Barbados Water Authority again um, is indicating that the tankers are going to be out in full force servicing those, those affected districts once the problem persists. The authority again apologizes for the inconvenience that these disruptions may have caused up to any of our customers and we will continue to provide you updates of the situation as, as information becomes available. A call for education authorities in both the public and private sector to do more to support the needs of special students. It's coming from the principal of the Erdiston Special School, Donna Holder. Following a virtual panel discussion exploring special education hosted by the Barbados Union of Teachers last evening, Holder made a strong case for a uniform approach to better assist special needs students in the local education system. There is no special education curriculum in Barbados. It must be noted that several committees have been formed over the years to work on the formulation of a special education committee. However, there has been no success up to this point. Special educators are required to follow the national curriculum by employing processes of accommodation and modification. What are these? Accommodation. Teachers can accommodate how information is presented to the students. How students are allowed to respond to assignments and assessments. The settings in which they learn or tested. Or the amount of time given to complete a task. Accommodations allow students to follow the same curriculum and meet the same expectations as their peers. Modifications. Teachers can modify or change what information is taught to a student. Both assignments and curriculum require, requirements can be modified to fit the student's needs. For example, task analysis can be used. This allows students to learn similar skills and concepts as their peers, but the materials to do so are modified to meet the student's ability level. A University of the West Indies professor is proposing that a national remote work policy be implemented in Barbados, and he's especially calling on private sector employers to take greater responsibility for the well-being of employers who are working from home. Professor Dwayne Devonish made the comments as he delivered the inaugural professorial lecture held by the School of Graduate Studies at the Cavill campus last evening. Now, since this shifting to a remote working context, does it absolve the employer from any responsibility of taking care of that worker now in a new environment? No. The employer and the individual have a shared responsibility, even within a remote work environment, a physical environment, 
there is that responsibility that has to be shared. And what this environmental wellness dimension does also is to recognize that we have to be preventative in how we set up our environmental spaces, our physical environmental spaces. And, and it does not matter if it's at work or, or if it's within a remote context. At the same time, Senior Lecturer in Tourism at the Cayfield School of Business and Management, Dr. Sherman Roberts, is proposing that a Caribbean Wellness Research Facility be established at the university's campus in Bridgetown. She believes this could help generate needed income while providing research on wellness for the region. As we, as a faculty, contemplate the Vice Chancellor's charge of the revenue revolution, maybe we can consider a Caribbean Wellness Research Institute centered at the Kiefel campus under the distinguished leadership of none other than Professor Dwayne Devonish. After all, there is the Global Wellness Institute that provide estimates on the global wellness industry, which currently is worth about 4.5 trillion US dollars with a projected growth of 7.5% by 2023. And these are only tourism projections. They do not include the potential spend by other sectors, organizations, and governments on wellness policies, programs, and initiatives. Now to the latest COVID-19 update, Barbados recorded 192 COVID-19 cases on Wednesday. 82 males and 110 females were identified from the 1,259 tests conducted by the Besto Santos Public Health Laboratory. Of the positive cases, 31 were under the age of 18 and 161 were 18 years and older. There were 97 people in isolation facilities and 2,323 in home isolation. A 92-year-old fully vaccinated woman died from the viral illness. As of February 23, the number of deaths from COVID-19 was 312. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated, and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80-year-old mum, and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional happenings, in his first independence address, St. Lucia's Prime Minister Philip Pierre called on citizens to end tribal politics as well as violence currently plaguing the country. St. Lucia has recorded 13 homicides so far for the year. We get the details from DBS Television. Acknowledging the political divide that currently grips the nation, Prime Minister Philippe Pierre used the platform of his inaugural independence address to call for bridging of this gap. What has been observed over the past years is the continuity of election-like campaigning even after an election has concluded. Also, support for an administration's policies seems to not be based on merit, but rather on support for the party in office. If St. Lucia is to succeed, these differences will need to be put aside, says Prime Minister Pierre. A half-successful St. Lucia is a totally unsuccessful St. Lucia. If we spend our time making war, against one another on the basis of party differences, we will ultimately destroy and consequently the future of our children. I will do my utmost to bring all St. Lucians together as one family. As he spoke on the issue of gun violence, the Prime Minister stressed the need for each citizen to recognize that their well-being is tied to that of others. On the international front, Russia has invaded Ukraine. Explosions rang out in the capital, Kharkiv and other cities on Thursday after Russian President Vladimir Putin authorized a special military operation into Ukraine. We get the details from Reuters TV. 
Russia has invaded Ukraine. Explosions rang out in the capital Kiev and other cities on Thursday. They came after Russia's president ordered a military operation into Ukraine's east. A Reuters witness heard blasts only minutes after President Vladimir Putin spoke on live TV. There he framed Russia's move as an act of defense. I decided to conduct a special military operation. It aims to protect people who have been bullied and subjected to genocide by the Kiev regime for eight years. For that, we will strive to demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine and will bring to justice those who committed multiple bloody crimes against civilians, including Russian citizens. It's not clear just how big Russia's operation might be, but it appeared to go beyond helping Russian-backed separatists in eastern Ukraine. Russian forces fired missiles at several cities and landed troops on Ukraine's southern coast. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.